Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you what to do with your leftover beef trimming. Now this is all the leftover trimming from our competition style brisket. So what we wanna do is separate all the meat from the fat. We wanna be working with about 70% lean meat, 30% fat because we want that trimming to go towards mince and then all the hard fat we're gonna to save to make beef tallow. So with this trim being Wagyu, we don't really need to save any hard fat to go into our mince trimming. There's plenty of intramuscular fat in there. So we're literally gonna separate all of the hard fat from the meat and we're just gonna use the meat for the mince. So we'll get started on trimming. We're gonna have two piles, one being meat, the other one being fat. So we'll get stuck into it. All right, and then I'm just gonna put all of our fat into a foil tray. I'll actually need another one for the amount we've got. And now we can start rendering these down. Now you can either separate the fat into foil trays like we're doing today, or if you've got a large pot, you can do it on the stovetop inside on low heat. Just stir it often and that fat will render down over a number of hours. But today we're gonna to be using our drum. We've got that set to about 300 Fahrenheit or 150 Celsius. So all we're gonna do is get this in our drum and let it go for a few hours. All right, now the fat's sorted, we can get started on mincing this meat. I'm just using a cheap electric mincer. I picked it up off Amazon. It's the Kogan brand. I don't think they make them anymore, but if you have a search, you'll find something very similar to that. I'll give you a quick rundown on how this works, then we'll get stuck into mincing this meat. All right, so we've just got our worm here. So we're just gonna insert that. Then we've got our knife. Then we've got our plate. We've got a coarse one today. These do come with a coarse and fine plate. We'll lock that in place. Then we've just got our power button back here. So we're gonna turn this on and start running this meat through. All right, so we've got some beautiful burger mince here. Now this looks like about a 60, 40% lean meat to fat ratio. So it is quite fatty. And the risk you'll find if you went to mince this again, is it'll come out mushy just because there's so much fat in there. The consistency this is at now is perfect for burgers. But like I said, if we were to run that through again, that fat would sort of turn pasty. I'll run a little bit through for you just so you can see. So as you can see, it's gone really pasty. The consistency is like really mushy. So that's why you don't wanna run it through again when you're working with real fatty mince. If it was leaner, more towards the 80% lean meat, 20% fat, then you could run it through again. But that's why with fattier burger mints, we'll only run it through once. All right, and now what I'll do with our mints is I'll just vac seal it. So I'll split it into a couple of bags. And I'll leave enough mints to make a quick burger for lunch. And these can go in the freezer. And that little bit for lunch we saved, I've just rolled into a nice little ball. So now we'll set up our barbecue and make a quick little burger. All right, so we've brought our rambler over. We've got our utensils hot plate heating up. So while that's happening, we'll toast our bun. All right, and that surface temperature is about 500 Fahrenheit or 260 Celsius. It's ready to go. So we'll get our burger ball down. Got our burger smasher and we'll just smash it down. We'll give it a bit of a twist, lift it up. We'll season this underside in our new beef rub we've got coming. And after about a minute, we'll flip it over. As you can see, we've got that beautiful crust. So now what we'll do is we'll get some burger cheese on and then we'll close the lid to let that melt. All right, it's been about 20 seconds. That cheese has melted nicely. So we'll get this off. We'll get it onto our bun. We'll throw some white onion down, some pickles, some special burger sauce on the underside of our top bun. Put our top bun on and that's good to go. Now that burger sauce is super simple. It's just equal parts, kewpie mayonnaise, mustard, tomato sauce, and then just a splash of pickle juice. Mix it together and it's good to go. But let's get stuck into this. The flavor and texture of that patty is incredible. It's very hard to beat making your own Wagyu smash burgers, but I'm gonna go finish this off. We'll let that fat keep rendering down and we'll check back in soon. All right, so our fat has been going for a few hours now. As you can see, there is plenty of rendered fat in these foil trays. And you'll know once the piece has had all the fat rendered out of it, as you'll be able to sort of squeeze it and it'll just fall apart. These thicker pieces still have a very long way to go, but some of these thinner ones, you're not gonna to get too much more out of them. But what we'll do to stop these trays overflowing is I'll get some of this liquid out now. So I'll just chuck some gloves on and we'll lift this smaller tray out. And you just wanna pour that liquid into a sealable jar or container. 
And I'll do the same from our bigger tray. And I'll put our trays back because I reckon we'll get that same amount of rendered fat again in the next few hours. Then I'll just leave the lid of that jar open for about half an hour to 45 minutes to let that cool down. Now, once that's sealed up, you can store that at room temperature and it'll last a few months. But what I usually do is I'll either store it in the fridge, it'll last six to 12 months, or like this one, I'll freeze it and it'll last much longer again. You'll notice the color difference between the two. Once this one cools down to room temperature or when it goes into the fridge, you'll see it turns white. And beef tallow's great. It's an awesome substitute for butters and oils. It gives you an amazing flavor, but I absolutely love using it when I'm wrapping brisket or ribs. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Like I said, I'm gonna continue to let that fat render down in our trays. I'll probably get another jar worth out of that later on. But for now, that's the end of the video. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.